What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And welcome to another installment of my Steven Spielberg Director's Marathon. And in today's video, I'm taking a look at one of the biggest cult classics Spielberg has ever directed. This is a movie that became much bigger in popularity due to the kids who grew up watching this movie. As this was for a while considered one of the weaker Spielberg films. This is Spielberg's take on the Peter Pan legend, 1991's Hook. So Hook was released in 1991. This was Spielberg's interpretation of the Peter Pan story. And the reception for this film, like I said, is so interesting because if you look at Rotten Tomatoes and see what critics thought of this film, they trashed it. It has a 28% on Rotten Tomatoes. And for many people, that's hard to believe because I know so many people who love this film. Kids that grew up with Hook love it and they consider it one of the defining movies of their childhood. So the popularity for the film has grown over time. But unfortunately, there is that negativity that the film has, and I do think that kind of tarnished the reputation of this film, in my opinion. In fact, Steven Spielberg himself has admitted disappointment over the film as well. He doesn't think this is one of his strongest accomplishments either. But what do I think of Hook? And do I think it's a good movie, or do I think it ranks as one of Spielberg's absolute worst? And is it worthy of its 28% on Rotten Tomatoes? Well, let's find out together. So in Hook, the boy who wasn't supposed to grow up, Peter Pan, does just that, becoming a soulless corporate lawyer whose workaholism could cost him his wife and kids. During his trip to see Granny Wendy in London, the vengeful Captain Hook kidnaps Peter's kids and forces Peter to return to Neverland. And this movie stars Robin Williams, Dustin Hoffman, Julia Roberts, Bob Hoskins, Maggie Smith, and Donnie Bosco. So Hook was very interesting because even though I was born in 1995, I didn't see Hook as a kid. I didn't see Hook as a kid for some reason. I guess because I was so big on the Disney animated 1953 version of Peter Pan that I don't think my mind was open to seeing other versions of the story. But as soon as my taste in film started expanding. I didn't see Hook until I probably about was a teenager probably. And I think at the time I thought the film was okay, but I didn't necessarily consider it one of Spielberg's greatest films. I did find myself a little disappointed in it. And I didn't I didn't really think too much of it. I've seen it a couple times since and I have appreciated Hook more and more over time. Now, is this one of my absolute favorite Spielberg movies? No. I don't think this ranks anywhere close to some of Spielberg's greatest films. I don't think it's anywhere close to the level of E.T. or Raiders of the Lost Ark or Jaws, to name a few. It's still a fascinating film, and I think Spielberg, he's so down on this film. He is very, I don't get why he's so depressed and disappointed about this movie, because there's still a lot of great things about Hook that I think he does so well. Like The overall premise of what actually happened if Peter Pan grew up, that is a brilliant premise that I think, Spielberg, you should pat yourself on the back for that, you and the screenwriters. One of the screenwriter's sons actually came up with that idea, uh, a, a version of Peter Pan, like what if he grew up and forgot his time in Neverland. That's a brilliant idea for a follow-up to Peter Pan. Like, if he actually did grow up and settle down and have a family, forgot about his time in Neverland, and becomes a workaholic. That is brilliant. And I actually do really love that idea. And it's fun seeing him return back to Neverland and learn what it's like to be, have a childlike mind once again, while also remembering why you were there in the first place. It is very fascinating that when he finally became remembered his time as Peter Pan and started flying and carrying on again. He forgot about his kids for a moment. That was a very fascinating concept as well. But I did find this movie really good on a story level. 
even the whole notion of Captain Hook and his role in this movie playing someone who's trying to manipulate the children into hating their father that you know he didn't spend too much time with him because of him being a workaholic and trying to put the kids on Captain Hook's side particularly the son Jack I thought it was a pretty fascinating idea as well because I think it adds further tension between the Peter Pan and Captain Hook dynamic. And there's a lot to this movie I do highly enjoy. Another thing Spielberg has expressed disappointment on, he didn't think the film succeeded on a visual level. This film was made before the rise of digital technology and Spielberg thought that he restricted himself with the use of physical sets and what they had at the time. A part of me kind of agrees with him because I think if he made Hook today with the digital technology that was used to create more fantastical worlds like in some of the Star Wars films and the Harry Potter films and even I guess what John Favreau did in the Jungle Book. Yeah, I think it would be a phenomenal looking movie because Spielberg is one who for the most part does a great job at using the technology and not abusing it. With that said though, for the time, the physical sets, I do find beautiful to look at. I do love the look of Neverland, the sets, the matte paintings and everything that they had for that time. And a lot of the flying effects, even though it can look a little dated at times, it, it did look pretty good for its day. So I think Spielberg took the best of 1991 had to offer and just made the best of it. And I do, I do think he's taking his issues with the film a little too hard. And he should just enjoy the movie that he made. And I think he did a good job with it, even though it's not one of his very best films. The casting in this film is a stroke of genius. You gotta give the movie props for that, even if you don't like the film. Robin Williams was probably perfect casting as Peter Pan. He definitely fit the bill, especially when he transitions from Peter Banning back to Peter Pan because Robin Williams always seemed to have that childlike wonder in him even as an actor so it made the transition all the more believable because you want to see him return to his roots as Peter Pan throughout his entire journey and it was just great to see Robin Williams let loose and give another excellent performance. I love Robin Williams in this movie and Watching these movies, once again, made me completely miss the guy. Robin Williams was a comedic legend, and Hook is definitely one of his best films as far as his acting performances are concerned. But I also can't forget about Dustin Hoffman as Captain Hook, who I think some aspects of his performance, I think he steals the spotlight from Robin Williams, if I'm being honest, because he completely hams up the role of Captain Hook. He mixes a very funny villain while also being very threatening at the same time and he mixes the two personas very well and the fact that he is playing somebody with a crisis because he hadn't fought Peter Pan in a while and he misses those days and he's getting to the point where he's going suicidal over it because he finds his life in Neverland pretty boring I do find it's a very fascinating study of the character and what happens if he doesn't have any conflict for a while. So there's a, a great comedy in him. He's very threatening and you weirdly pity Captain Hook at the same time. It is so crazy, but Dustin Hoffman pulls a very multi-layered Captain Hook, probably more so the movie credits itself for, but he is excellent as Captain Hook. And I also gotta give props to Bob Hoskins as Mr. Smee, who does a great job in the role as well. He and Dustin Hoffman have pitch perfect chemistry together. I love their constant bickering and back and forth. And he just nails the role as well. Maggie Smith as Grandma Wendy has a great supporting performance in there. And then the Lost Boys are a ton of fun, including the leader of the, the Lost Boys, Rufio played by a young Donnie Bosco, long before I knew him best for voicing Prince Zuko in Avatar The Last Airbender. Rufio is a fun character, and I, even though he's a, a product of the 1990s and how they wrote children, but Rufio's still a lot of fun, Red Mohawk and all. This movie is quite a bit of fun from its visual effects. 
a criminally underrated John Williams score. Like, there's some aspects of Williams' score that's so adventurous, and it brings the childlike innocence of Peter Pan, and it gives me goosebumps, especially when Peter Pan is flying for the first time. It's a phenomenal sequence that is so excellently scored. Gotta give props to John Williams for delivering another great score. As for negatives, this movie, like I said, is not great. This movie does take a few missteps. Uh, one of them is uh, some miscasting. Uh, the big one is Julia Roberts' as Tinker Bell. Like, I never really got her performance, to be honest. I did find her incredibly miscast, and I found her incredibly annoying in the role. I do think some of the directions they took with Tinker Bell I thought was a little weird, and it felt a little fan fiction-y at times, especially when it becomes clear that Tinkerbell has the hots for Peter Pan, which is a little gross in my opinion. <laughs> for some reason, Julia Roberts never really clicked with me as Tinkerbell. And that's a bit of a shame, because Julia Roberts has had her good moments as an actress. Just, I don't think Hook is one of them. Uh, the child acting is a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, the, the kids who play the Lost Boys, I think, play their parts well especially Donnie Bosco, but then the two main kids, uh, Peter's kids, I think their acting is a little inconsistent. Uh, the girl especially, her acting is a little rough. I'm trying not to chew her out because that's a little bit too harsh, but I don't think her acting is all the best. And it is a little weird because Spielberg tends to give top-notch performances out of child actors as evidence with Henry Thomas and Drew Barrymore and E.T and Christian Bale and Empire of the Sun, so uh, it was a little weird that some of these child performances weren't the best. And then a couple other issues as well. I think the pacing, I think it can drag at times. It's about two and a half hours long. There's a few scenes I think you could have trimmed in there, especially for a movie geared for kids. I think it could bore some aspects, some of the slower aspects of the story could bore younger children, I think, uh, that I feel like drags the pacing a little too long. You could have cut out some of the Tinkerbell fan fiction -y stuff, for instance. And then, uh, then there's a couple issues I do have with the story. Like, the movie does flash back to Peter Pan's past and some of the decisions they did with it didn't really make sense. Like, Peter Pan's talking about how he did not want to grow up at first and then he goes to Neverland and he had these thoughts the movie makes you believe he has these thoughts as a baby but that wouldn't really make sense because if he went to Neverland as a baby the rule Neverland is never to grow up Peter Pan would be a baby? like that don't make sense uh, that was a weird choice that they decided to make in the, that flashback should have had him as the kid that they showed later on in the flashback, but that didn't really make that much sense to me. With all that said, I don't think Hook is as deserving of a dumpster fire as critics made it out to believe. I think some critics thought it was too overly sentimental. I don't think it's as overly smaltzy as always. If you saw my last Spielberg review of Always, Always is the most smaltziest Spielberg film, and I don't think 19... And I don't think Hook is near as schmaltzy as always. I guess because Hook has the fantasy adventure into it as well, mixed with the themes of family and parenthood and remembering your childlike innocence regardless of where you are in life. I guess that's what turned critics off in Spielberg. They must have thought Spielberg pushed it a little too far. I don't think he did really. I think he was the right director for this project. And I enjoy the overall direction. There is some narrative missteps, a couple of miscastings in there, but Robin Williams is great. Dustin Hoffman's awesome. I thought the visuals were good for the time. John Williams' score is underrated, and this movie is quite a bit of fun to watch. Even though it's not one of Spielberg's greatest films, it's still solid enough, and I still highly recommend it. I'm sure any kid that grew up in the 90s will probably disagree with those critics who trashed it. And I think the reception for this film, I think, has grown over time, even with the dampering reputation with the critics. I think because the kids in the 90s loved it, obviously they've shared it with their kids. And I guess they've enjoyed it as well, because I haven't known too many people that have disliked this movie. 
I do find this movie highly enjoyable, and it's one I've appreciated more over time, especially after my first viewing, which I wasn't too crazy over it. I do like this film, even though it's not one of Spielberg's best, but it's solid enough, and I'm giving Hook a 4 out of 5 stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 75 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Hook as part of my Spielberg Director's Marathon, where I'm reviewing his complete filmography from his directing debut to his most recent film. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're a big fan of Steven Spielberg and his filmography, I'll leave a link in the description box below for my playlist where you can catch up on all the Steven Spielberg reviews I've done on this channel so far. At the time of this video, I've reviewed the original Indiana Jones trilogy, I've reviewed Jaws, I've reviewed E.T., Close Encounters, The Color Purple, to some of his more obscure films such as Always, 1941, Duel, The Sugarland Express, and many more. I got more Spielberg reviews to come on this channel, so if you're a hardcore fan of Steven Spielberg, click the link in the description below to see more, and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of future Spielberg reviews. Join me next time in the Spielberg Marathon where I'll be taking a look at one of Steven Spielberg's most commercially successful, most acclaimed, and most celebrated films, and I can't wait to share this review with you guys is from my review of 1993's Jurassic Park. Definitely look forward to that review coming very, very soon. But if you've seen Hook, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, music reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!